Good morning, good afternoon, folks, wherever you might be. Thank you for joining us here at Code It Live. It's another Thursday, which means it's .NET time. But thankfully, today you're not stuck um, watching me and my code not compile. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're in better hands today with my good friend, Gerald. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. How about you? Now at least you can you can watch my code not compile. So that's, yeah. what... <laughs> that's what we do. But uh, Gerald, what do you do? What do I do? Um, well, I am a software engineer on the Donut Maui team, so that's what I do, and uh, a lot of stuff that um, has to do with Donut Maui. So I also uh, involve myself with the Donut Maui community toolkit for the ones who know what that is, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit here. Um, I also do a little bit with some evangelizing, if you will. So I have a little YouTube channel where I talk a lot about .NET MAUI and what's new, how to use some plugins, uh, how to use some features of .NET MAUI. So I make videos about that, um, some blogs, talks at conferences. That's who I am. Yeah, all the things. All the yeah, things. And Gerald is underselling himself. He's, he's quite the same, <laughs> uh, especially, especially on the YouTubes. Uh, so, you know, good as for what you do. I think uh, you have helped so many .NET Maui developers and, you know, .NET developers. And this is a good thing, right? A .NET Maui developer is a .NET developer, essentially. Bring over your skills. And now Absolutely. You, are, you know, you can build natively for mobile and desktop. Yeah. All right, so you mentioned the uh, Maui Community Toolkit. Um, maybe tell us a little bit more about it and maybe tell us uh, what's you know cool and happening. I know you've been busy with uh, the media element. So yeah. if you're ready, let's uh, bring up your, uh, your desktop. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. So maybe for the people who aren't really familiar with like the Community Toolkit, because, you know, with the whole .NET Maui story, of course, we're coming from Xamarin, Xamarin Forms. And at some point, we also had the Xamarin Community Toolkit. Um, and if you want to go even further back, you also have like the Windows Community Toolkit, right? And I think that one is a little bit more popular than, than we are right now, uh, because, simply because it has been around for a long, long time. And what they do and what we do is basically... Um, um, yeah, I, I, there's a couple of ways to describe it, basically. We have a lot of stuff that isn't inside of .NET MAUI or Xamarin Forms um, directly. And then we're talking about a lot of stuff that has to do with like the XAML, right? If you're doing XAML and data binding, you probably need a lot of converters and that kind of stuff. Um, and everyone has a bunch of converters that they're basically just copy and pasting over and over from each project to the next one. Maybe tweak it a little bit for the next project and then suddenly you have two versions and four versions and eight versions and um, that's where it goes wrong, right? And those converters, they're like too small to wrap into its own NuGet package, maybe. Um, so that's kind of like what we try to do, right? Stuff from the community, stuff that everyone basically needs, but doesn't really, you know, it's too opinionated to go into .NET Maui itself directly. Um, but with the toolkit, we have a nice package where we can stuff all these things in um, so that you can install that package and still have all the goodness that's maintained, that's in a central place, uh, so you don't have to maintain that yourself, right? Uh, but together with that, we... Oh, go ahead, Sam. You, yeah, you I was going to say, like, th this is what, you know, makes the you know ecosystem so good because the community is stepping up. I mean, there are plenty of ammunition for developers to be yeah. productive. And, and speaking of that, our good friend um, Alan Ritchie is here. Hey, Alan. Uh, Alan is actually close enough to me, like it is across uh, a big lake uh, that we have in North America, uh, but over in Canada. Uh, but, you know, Alan maintains Shiny, um, you know, there's there's a lot of toolkit, there's a lot of, you know, UI help, there is, you know, a lot of stuff that developers uh, can you know, pick up and run with. And and like you said, like the, the opinion and the thing I think is important because like a framework has to do all of its basics. And, uh, you know, I've seen this, you know, with, uh, you know, other frameworks like, you know, React or Angular. Uh, opinions are nice until your opinions don't match the frameworks and then you're fighting those battles. Exactly. So this is nice because you get to pick and choose. Uh, this is not, you know, nothing's being forced upon you. You uh, choose parts of the community toolkit that, you know, make you more productive. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, part of why the Xamarin Community Toolkit came to be is because we had Xamarin Forms and at some point it became apparent that Xamarin Forms 5 was going to be like the last major version, right? Because .NET Maui was going to come that's going to replace Xamarin Forms. And we had at that time a couple of controls that were under a experimental flag. And some of those were ready to be in Xamarin Forms and .NET Maui, right? So we took those, but there were also a couple, one of which was the media element, 
with, from which we thought like mm, we're not quite sure right right it's it's not quite stable we we have to tinker a little bit with it so what we did is um, put those in the examine community toolkit so that you know people can still use it exact same apis different namespace but people would still have it if if they were using it right um, and there we could tinker on it we could we could um, um, start improving on it and make it better. And we're close enough to the .NET MAUI Examine team to actually uh, take it from the community toolkit into like actual .NET MAUI if, um, if that's something that we want to do, right? So that that transition should be quite easy if we ever get to that point. Um, so that's that was kind of an extra reason why we started the Examine uh, community toolkit at that time. Um, and now, you know, then the whole rewrite to .NET MAUI came and uh, we are just, you know, I work at Microsoft, and this is definitely a project that is related to Microsoft and .NET MAUI, but, you know, I'm not getting paid for, for this project, right? So that can be uh, not really transparent to the outside world, I guess, um, because what project is going to be paid for by Microsoft and which one isn't, I can totally understand. Um, and, and this one is is one that I do in my own time, right, together with, uh, we have now a team of like, I don't know, five, five people or something like that. Um, and um, um, so we are do all doing this in, in our spare time, in, in this project at least. So um, you can definitely help out as the community. It's the community toolkit. But uh, we, we didn't have the capacity to rewrite all the things that were in like the examine community toolkit immediately to the .NET Maui community toolkit. And especially like the media element, that's a big control, right? I mean, in essence, it sounds very simple. I just want to play a video and that's that. Um, but turns out it's much more complicated. So it's very, very um, complicated. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, if I'm being honest, again, this is on my, my very personal note here. Um, I hate it that something like this isn't in Donet Maui um, right now, right? I mean, it's 2022, 2023 almost, and having a cross-platform mobile framework that um, doesn't allow you to play videos is, is kind of crazy to me. So um, I really want to have this, and the first step to make that happen is put it in the .NET MAUI Community Toolkit, make sure that it's stable, that it's great, that it's awesome, and from there, I hope to bring it to .NET MAUI directly um, soon after, but We'll see how it goes. So that's kind of like, yeah, where, where this comes from. We had a implementation in the Xamarin Community Toolkit. And don't get me wrong, it was great work by Peter Foote. Actually, someone from the community uh, has been around for a long, long time. He implemented it for, I don't know, all the platforms that were supported by Xamarin, WPF even, UWP, oh. iOS, Android, all the things. So that was really cool. Um, but as we already established, like playing playing a video, just just playing a video is is very hard, right? So um, we we took all the learnings basically from what we had in the media element in the Xamarin Community Toolkit. Um, I trying to just focus on the basics right now. Playing a video, uh, pause, play those kinds of things, like the all really the essential things and not the the nice to have things. Um, make that really solid and stable, and um, see from there where we where we can take it basically. Yeah. Okay. So what you have open, I mean, this is the uh, sample app uh, that comes with the yeah. community toolkit. Yeah. Right? So I'm here on my Mac. Uh, this I'll try to see if I can, whoops, wrong button. Uh, which one? There we go. Um, yeah. So this is the um, uh, community toolkit repository that I have open here in Visual Studio for Mac. I have to relearn all my yeah, the, between the Windows and Mac, all your muscles. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, but this, I'm I'm a big fan of this project. I mean, this is all out on GitHub, folks. So you can, you know, um, yeah. see what the you know team is up to. But uh, it's a very real world app that has all of the you know behaviors, all of the converters, everything showcased uh, all in one app. Um, so it's a really yeah. nice and and just you know just to open up a big code base and see how things are done. I think that's always helpful. Absolutely, absolutely. That's all. That's also a nice thing, right? Uh, we get a lot of people asking, like, "Hey, how should I do this? How should I do CI on my .NET Maui app?" And I can, in a lot of times, point to this project, which is like small enough that you can kind of distill all the things that you need from our build pipeline and whatnot. It's not too complicated, but also big enough. And and you know, we're actually using this and releasing this, so um, it's something that that right. that we are using, yeah, um, so that actually works exactly. 
Um, so yeah, on GitHub, we're under community toolkit slash Maui. Um, so like I said, we also have the Windows community toolkit. And at some point early on, when we started creating these community toolkits, um, I ran into kind of like a naming issue uh, where I claimed a name on NuGet and, and the rest of the teams at Microsoft weren't really happy with that. Um, I can't even remember what it was, but um, um, it, sh it, it was supposed to be a reserved name and I managed to go between the lines there and uh, actually got the name there. And then they were on the phone with me like, hey, that's not that's not how we're supposed to do this. So um, here we are. Um, and, and now with, with going to Maui and, and the Windows Community Toolkit, like we had the unique opportunity to kind of like realign, right? So what we did is say we're going to call this community toolkit and then we can have the community toolkit maui we can have community toolkit windows maybe blazer in the future who knows um so we have kind of like this umbrella where we can plug in multiple products right so that's kind of like where how we're approaching this um but we have one for maui now and yeah we have of course our code in in the source folder right here so this is basically where all of our stuff lives uh, that's actually in the library um, we have this little sample um, app where we try to have samples for everything that we do in uh, our library as well. And then, of course, some, some build stuff here, um, um, some uh, description on how to actually get started with this, how you can propose a feature. So all the things that you want to have, want to know about this um, library is basically here. Yeah. Then whenever you do open it, um, you get something like this. So this is our whole solution. Well, actually, this is the sample app, but that kind of like references um, the source, right? So we don't um, use the NuGet. We actually have the source here. And I kind of like that always because that will give you an easy way to actually, I'm, I'm very visually, I'm, I, I'm a bad developer, like backend to backend wise. That's not really something that I, that I like doing. Um, I like to have a, a visual thing. So uh, what I really like about this approach is that you have the sample app linked. I can just start creating my control and I can actually see it on screen. And then in the sample app, I can implement a property and I can run it through the emulator and I can see if it actually does the thing that I expect it to do, right? So that's exactly what you can do with this. You have like the community toolkit Maui thing here. We have a little core library. Um, and then whenever you implement uh, things in here, you can go to the sample app. You can start consuming that code and you can see if it actually works. It makes it easier for debugging. You can just step into all the rest of the code. So um, that that makes sense to me. Other people might have a different way of working, but this really makes sense for me. So um, that's what we're trying to do here. And what we are going to do is add media element as a separate NuGet package. Um, why? Because um, for Android, um, Android is notoriously hard for these things. Uh, the Excel also, player. Yes, we're using the Excel player because that is pretty amazing. Uh, and if you're just going to use the basic functionality that is in Android itself, then then you're going to have a hard time implementing all the stuff that Excel player already did, right? So mm -hmm. um, we're going to use the Excel player uh, because it's already very complete. But that brings in an extra dependency. And right. what we all, always want to be careful with is, um, you know, whenever you implement the community toolkit Maui, when you pull that into your project, that and you don't want to use the media element, then suddenly you're now stuck with this dependency that um, you're not even going to use, right? And it's right. not going to end up in your app because of all kinds of optimizations. But still, I can totally imagine that people don't really like having that. So um, that's why we chose to, to put it in a separate NuGet package so that you can just install that one if that's what you want and uh, don't get all the extra stuff that you don't want or need. Yeah, yeah and that's always you know a, a thing to be conscious of as a library maintainer. You want to be you know not giving your users extra dependencies. I mean, you could do tree shaking and you know take away the things that are not being used. But you know why bring in something that you know if you're not explicitly wanting to use anyways? Um, yeah. L let me ask you a question along those lines because sure. I think some folks have asked me about this. Um, so Dart uh, and Maui is you know the next generation cross-platform uh, .NET strategy and uh, geolocation mapping solutions are big that you know many, many apps need and mapping is done and done now with .NET Maui. Um, you can, you know, have, you know, built-in platform integrated maps for iOS, Android, you know, uh, Mac Catalyst and so on. But folks have asked like, why is that a separate NuGet package? Why is it not built into .NET Maui? Is that a similar reason that we don't want to maybe take on some dependencies? Actually, it's the exact same reason because, again, for Android, <laughs> um, they've they've um, uh, set it up in a way that you need an extra 
dependency on like the Google map stuff, right? And yeah. people are, want to be careful with bringing that in. Um, so that's basically the reason why that is a separate data package as well. Yeah. And I mean, Alan is chiming in here that, you know, tree shaking uh, is not the easiest thing to do. And in fact, like a lot, I would say like a lot of the work that the .NET team nowadays does uh, with around like linking, uh, that is, you know, hardcore engineering. Like, they like especially yeah. if you're building apps with like Blazor, they only give you the parts of .NET that your uh, app absolutely needs. You know, when you're running it as WebAssembly, so it's not easy um, uh, to pull off all of that. Absolutely, right. but that's but that's the cool thing, right? It, before. Um, in Xamarin, we were kind of like the only project that were really needing this, right? And if we're working on this, um, and now suddenly this is something that's going to be used throughout all of .NET, right? AOT compiling, all that kind of stuff. Um, so we suddenly have a much broader focus. And together with that, a lot of more smarter people, um, we have a lot of those at Microsoft that are going to look into these solutions. Um, so hopefully it will become better, it will become more stable because now we simply have more people looking at this because more people seem to want it. So that's great. Yeah. yeah. All right. So Media Element is a separate project and uh, what's in it? Yeah. So what's in it? So like I, like I already said a little bit, like I'm trying, trying to focus on uh, the essentials, right? Because there's a lot of fun stuff that you can implement with this and, and you can take it as far as you like. But I'm trying to really focus on like the, um, the really core functionality of, of playing some media. Um, but one thing that um, um, I really wanted to do was something that we heard from a lot of people in the Diamond Community Toolkit is like, I want to be able to play live streams, right? So you have HLS, uh, HTTP live streaming, and along the same lines, I think it's the same um, uh, technology. You have M3U8. Um, I think it uses the same thing underneath. Um, and some other things as well, right? And that's also where ExoPlayer comes in. Like on iOS, it's mostly very simple. On iOS, you have the, uh, so let me actually pull it up. Is it the AV player or what was it called? Yeah, we have the AV player. AV. Um, and is that a part of UIKit? Like that's that's Apple maintained? Or yeah, exactly. It... Okay, okay. Yeah, yes. that's, yeah. that's, and, and with Apple, like everything is in one, is in the box, right? With right. Apple, it's just, you have UI kit and that's the thing. And um, don't get me wrong, on iOS, there are some things that I hate as well, but on Android, it seems to be more. Uh, but for iOS, you have the AV player and you just give it a URL and it plays. If it's supported, it plays, right? And for Android, you will have to do all these kinds of crazy things to get HLS and that live streaming and all that stuff going. Um, and that's where Excel player kinds of comes in that, they they help us make our lives a lot a lot easier because they already um, implemented a lot of that so that's why we chose to um, use that basically um, but yeah ios is now driving me crazy because for ios 16 they they did something with the um, playback controls that are not showing up so i already have this comment right here like we've kind of worked around it but not not really nicely um but yeah, so the way this is set up, you can already see it needs a good number of things, right? So um, this is the media element um, um, in, in like the abstract .NET MAUI layer um, where we have a couple of things. So we have play, pause, stop, right? Um, um, autoplay, so if the video, whenever it's loaded, if it's going to um, autoplay, then yes or no. Uh, the current state, so you know, what is the player currently doing? Is it buffering? Is it playing? Is it paused? What, what's it actually doing? Um, do we have a duration? Um, so what's the duration of the things that's going to play? And that's also where it gets awkward immediately, right? Like for live streams, you don't have a duration. So what are we going to do in that case? Um, is looping, so whenever the video stopped uh, or it comes to the end, like are we going to loop from the beginning again? Uh, the position, so you can influence like, hey, if, if someone is going to see yes or no, you can say like, hey, I want to start playing from halfway in the video, something like that. And I'm saying video, but it, this also works for audio, by the way. So um, well, the video is the kind of like the most obvious thing you can use this for. But you can definitely also use it for streaming audio, audio, and then whatnot. So um, um, replace wherever I say video with, with audio just as well. Yeah. Um, so show playback controls. That's That's basically what I said earlier. Um, and this is basically, so this comes back to what we do with .NET MAUI, right? We follow the paradigm of, we map everything from an abstract layer to however it should work on 
uh, the platform. Um, and that this playback controls is, is one perfect example of that. Um, this influences if you want to see the playback controls um, that are supposed to come with the platform, right? So um, for iOS, uh, you see the little controls. I can, I can actually bring it up. That will make it more clear. So I have the sample app right here. Um, and you will see the play button in the center, right? And you will have like the skip forward 10 seconds and backward 10 seconds, something like that, and the little position bar. Uh, so you have all that kind of stuff. And you can influence with this property, like, hey, do I want to actually see those playback controls, yes or no? Um, and if you set it to no, then you can implement your own controls, or maybe you're just showing a video that, that shouldn't be influenced in any way. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what you can do with that. So here, the media element, I have a little demo paid for it. You can see it's buffering, playing. Um, and whenever I click here on the canvas of this media element, you can see these iOS playback controls, controls coming yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and I can actually see I have the switch here. So whenever I do this, um, now I can click mm -hmm. it and it does nothing, right? So it's really annoying because I get the audio of this video. So I'm sorry if I was suddenly talking louder here. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of like how that works. Looping video. Can I actually do the go mute it so whenever i loop the video and i start playing it again and i scroll all the way to the end right and you can see the little bar here down at the bottom right it, it goes together with the position so that influences the position and i can also do it with this right. um, and i can set it all the way to the end right here and if we wait a couple of seconds i set the loop on so um whenever it comes to the end now it's going to go back to the beginning and it's going to play again right so there we have our looping thing um, you can set the speed, so you can set it to, I don't know, 10 times, and it goes uh, much, much faster, right? So you can influence that as well. Pause it, play it, pause it, pause it, pause it. Oh, it does work. Phew, I thought it didn't work. Um, you can play it, right? So you can do all these kinds of things. Um, yeah, and that's basically the, the kind of like things I try to focus on. Um, you can get the width, uh, you can get the height, you can set the volume. And these were kind of like, in my mind, the, the things that um, were the most important. So we're currently trying to um, get all of that in, get that stable, and have that see where we can do it. Okay, so th this is this is great work, uh, by the way. Um, Thank you. <laughs> you know, early days, but you... Uh, so uh, as we speak right now, um, this is out in preview, right? Um, so not... It's in alpha. Let's call it alpha, right? Um, do I still have the uh, repository up? Because what we, what I'm doing is I have this draft PR for this, um, but that already produces NuGet packages. So I didn't want to merge this yet. And that's where it's kind of like, you know, that this, this is where it goes wrong, right? You, you think like, Hey, I'm going to focus on this and that more gets added. And now you have a PR that never gets merged and you have 45 commits and 37 files. Um, and people already start reviewing it while it's not ready yet. So that's where it spirals out of control. But anyway, yeah. uh, that's, that's for us to, to kind of like, uh, fix. Um, but yeah, we, this already produces NuGet packages. So if you, um, go here and you check out like, Hey, what does this say? Build number zero, zero, whatever, make note of this little build number. And you can go to our wiki right here and we have, uh, preview packages. And you can get um, here from pull request, right? So you need to add this feed right here. You can then find this build number. And then whenever you get the build number from the build that was just finished for the media elements, you can try it out today. Uh, whenever it's merged, it will become, you know, a part of like one level higher. So it will become part of our nightly builds. And you can just start using this one. Um, so if you already want to try it, you totally can, but you have to go through a couple of um, hoops here to actually get that going. But um, yeah, this this is your time to get that feedback in and um, um, influence the direction of the media element. Alan is trolling me like, when, when is the release date? Uh, no, but this this is uh, this is exactly the pain of um, you know native platform dev, right? Because like I, th I think you initially had said like you know maybe with .NET seven, uh, but you know you have to depend on iOS you know sixteen and Xcode fourteen support and Android. Um, I, I don't even know what the latest one is, but all of these no. are moving, moving targets. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so that's absolutely what you say. Like, you know, it's not just one thing that we need to focus on, right? We are supporting Windows, we're supporting Android, we're supporting iOS. 
Um, we now also have on the community toolkit, which is pretty cool on our core team, we have someone from Tizen. So hopefully Ooh, Tizen nice. will, will follow along for this as well. I want to play uh, but yeah. on, my, on, my, on my refrigerator, you know, why not? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so yeah, that's you know you have to keep track of like three, four platforms for this to yeah. to work, um, and then hopefully you know make it work stable. Um, and that's that's kind of like where we're going. Also, a couple of people like I uh, I would like to hack these things together. Um, and then there were some people who said like oh, maybe we should solve this a little bit nicer and do it this way, um, like for that duration, right? The duration should be something that's only on a source, a media source, whenever it's not a live stream, right? So they're totally right about that. But I'm like, ah, oh, let's worry about that later. Um, but I think we're we're at that stage, like you know, we we're worrying, we should worry about this now, um, tidy up all the things. And yeah, my aim was kind of like that at seven. Um, I think it will be a little bit later. I, I would be very happy if it's still this year, but uh, we're we're going for it. So, all right. Oh, I wanted to ask you. You mentioned iOS and Android. Windows is it easier? Is it harder? Media player? What what is it that you're using? Well, I must say it wasn't too bad. Here, let me do. Uh, I need to log in here again. Wait, I can do magic tricks. I can switch to Windows here. And I'm now giving away my magic trick. It's just a remote desktop, but oh well. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I have it on Windows as well. I still need to load it up. And where, where I was, is your, where is your Windows machine? It's right here. It's right here. No, it is, it is right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I I was actually playing with like the dev box. Uh, so I think dev box now has two meanings, right? We have the ARM based machine, which is actually a physical machine, but we also have dev box, which is basically your development machine in the cloud, right? Uh, and I, I was talking about that one um, to see if I can make Maui work with that as well. Um, but it's early days. So this is this is an actual physical machine that I, I I use my Mac as like my main driver, and then I have a Windows machine that I just remote desktop into uh, to do my other work as well. So I'm the same guy. I have a Windows box. Actually, that's my like, streaming machine. Um, oh, hey, all right. Uh, Food Schnapple is here. Hey. Hello, good friend. Um, Hello, but yeah. um, when I uh, am out and about on the road, like I don't want to remote into something that's running at, off my home. Maybe I'm on a different continent. Uh, so I'm actually uh, the brave or the really foolish one who tries to do uh, a VM on my Mac, which means like, like it's mm. like it's going like all the fans and all the heat that it can produce. It's going. Uh, it's not bad. Like I, I run parallels uh, to run, you know, a Windows box on my Mac. It's not bad. Yeah, yeah, I've been there. I didn't like it. I'm trying to. Oh, there we go. I'm trying to load something up here, but this one is stuck. It seems. I think this one's going through. Okay. Uh, so yeah, for Windows, I was actually um, pleasantly surprised because you know that's also like what I mentioned a little bit earlier. Like for .NET Maui, the paradigm that we follow is we map everything to something that is available on the underlying platforms, right? So we're very dependent on what is uh, implemented there. And um, because we're building on WinUI 3, WinUI, WinUI 3, I'm not supposed, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say the three, yes or no, but we are building on top of WinUI. And that's something that is like, you know, um, very new, very young as well. Um, but they have a media control as well. And it actually supported like all the live stream stuff as well. And, and it did all the things that we we're implementing up till now. So that was really great. Um, so yeah, we, we have it for Windows. Let me see if I can switch it here. And, and while you're pulling it up, uh, Aaron commented on, on the Mac front. See, I'm on a Mac that's uh, three years old now, but I, I mean, the latest M1, M2 uh, chips are amazing. I need to switch over eventually. Me too. Uh, Me too. Yeah. For my, my work one is still an Intel one, which yeah, is has the fan on all the time, yeah, basically. All the time. Yeah. Well, I mean, winter time, I don't need to run heat because <laughs> yeah, yeah, the fan is good enough. Yeah. I'm not sure if this is going to work. I don't think so. I have too many preview bits going on for this to just work. Um, but yeah, on Windows, we we definitely have this working as well. Um, That's really good. So yeah, um, I, I was pleasantly surprised with with all the things there, and um, um, we could we could just run it. Um, like I said, the live streaming stuff is already in there. Um, I couldn't really find an overview. I, I should bug someone about that of the formats that we're actually supporting on Windows. Um, but um, yeah, it, it was working on Windows too. So I'm really happy so with that. 
let, let me ask you this. Like you, you showed us a couple of the properties um, that are on it, you know, um, show controls, and then, you know, the, uh, the state and then the, uh, the seek. Um, were there any uh, platform differences that were particularly, you know, icky when it came down to mapping some of those? Oh yeah, so that's 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 kind of like the hard part about our job, right? So um, ideally, everything will just have one property, and you can you know set the same thing. Like, is looping? Is it true? Yes or no? And you set it to whatever is looping is called on Android. You set that to true or false, and it works, right? But unfortunately, um, it doesn't always work that way. So um, if we want to look at how that kind of like works. Um, so for uh, Maui now, we have like the handlers and then that kind of stuff, right? So um, for all the platforms, we have these handlers here. And um, well, just let's just open one up yeah, and you have the, um, um, right? So you have a couple of events, like whenever the handler is going to be connected. So the handler is kind of like, you know, your glue between um, the abstract layer and, and the platform layer, right? Um, and actually i think here we do most of it on the shared one so with this naming convention right you will see this a lot now with dotnet maui projects we will have this um android mac ios because that's mostly the same uh the dotnet one the shared one and the windows one and this just means this just indicates whatever something is going to be compiled for, right? So whenever you see the dot Android, this is code that's only going to be compiled whenever you run it for Android. Um, and for the rest, of course, that, that follows the same pattern. And shared then, you know, um, is kind of like compiled for all the projects. And the .NET one um, is used a lot of the times whenever you output a library, whenever you want to unit test things. Um, this is being... Um, 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 compiled whenever you don't have a target specified. So um, if we go to our little sample app, csproj here, we have this project file and you have the target frameworks, right? So we have Net6 iOS, Net6 Android, Net6 Mac Catalyst. Um, and we actually don't have the other target here. So that's interesting. Um, but if you would have like just net six here, um, that's where this, this dot net, um, compilation comes in basically. Like I said, that that's usually the case for specific projects, unit tests, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. so here, before, before you go, go any further, yeah, sure. uh, our, our, our chat room loves to troll, uh, Gerald, our good friend, um, Foolish Nabble is asking you to take the Visual Studio survey, whether you're enjoying it or not <laughs> on stream. Uh, no. Uh, Don't joke off again. Yeah, yeah. So we are <laughs> we are on a lot of you know preview bits here and there, and I would say like this. Uh, I mean, I'm on a VS for Mac a lot, and things are stable now. Yes, there are you know edges that are you know uh, a little rough, but uh, I think for Maui development, it's it's. I mean, the, the Windows stuff is done because like that's you know production ready, but this is still in preview. But for the most part, it it works. Uh, things are okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And actually, this is, is well. you're looking at, I, this This might be an internal version, so I hope I'm not showing any stuff that I'm not supposed to show, but um, especially for our internal versions, it has been really good for quite a while now. So I'm really happy with that because I, I really want to use my Mac as my main machine. Um, and and I, there was a time where I wasn't really able to do that, which was for good reason. Like for Mac OS, also big product, very complex product, and um, they prioritized, you, you know, you can agree, you can disagree. They prioritized rewriting the whole thing to .NET 6. It runs on .NET 6. That's that's mm -hmm. crazy to imagine, right? Uh, and it was before running on GDK stuff, right? So that's kind of like the UI framework for, um, well, Unix-based machines. It was a and, shim, right? Now it's native. Yeah. Native. And now it's using native Mac, uh, Mac OS like UI elements, right? So that makes it so much faster, so much cooler, so much nicer to work with. Um, but that's that's what they needed to prioritize to get this out. So that was why the data Maui support was lagging behind a little bit. But they're catching up, and it's it's been working great. Yeah. I was at uh, at another conference, uh, and we like to give you know we sometimes like to complain a lot, like uh, particularly our good friend Maddie uh, Malikila, she gets <laughs> the brunt of it because like she's responsible for tooling, and uh, people keep telling her you know hot reload this isn't working maybe you should rename it to like lukewarm reload, 
which <laughs> I, I, I get it. But, you know, um, there are things in Dart and Mali, whether you maybe you agree or not, but the whole, you know, dependency injection, like it's the generic build host system. And if you are swapping out your dependencies and if you're swapping out which view is loaded up, uh, you know, that's hard for the hot real system to catch up on. But if you are on a view, I mean, it, it's fine for the most part. But I mean, you, there are edge cases and tooling can always be better. But I think, you know, Absolutely. Visual Studio uh, for Mac, like Inger was saying, it's caught up quite a bit and it's now pretty stable for us. Yeah. yeah. Sorry um, for this segue. Yeah. No worries, no worries. So you can already see here, right? Like this is this is basically the, the handler and mapper architecture. Um, so we're going to define like the properties that I just showed on, on the uh, abstract thing, right? And we're going to map that to, um, yeah, uh, um, methods that are actually going to apply it to the platform specific control, right? So the playback controls, the source, the speed, volume, position. Um, most of, sometimes you can just, you know, whatever you set the property that, that will just work. Uh, for Android, there it was this for the looping thing, we needed to do a little um, extra thing, which was apparently only needed for Android. I can't really remember why that is. Um, but this is where you will see like, hey, um, we're going to make a sidestep and only do that for Android. Um, I probably could have solved this differently, but in this case, I, I just chose to do it, again, hacking a little bit uh, to do it with this if compiler directive. Um, same way for like the commands, right? So these are just properties that you set. This is more like your events and your commands that you're going to implement. And then we have a couple of um, constructors for, for this actual handler that we want to put in here. Um, and then you will see like, you know, um, for then the actual implementations. So again, another thing that you will see for .NET MAUI a lot now is these partial uh, classes. Um, because because we're only compiling this for Android and macOS and whatnot, uh, we have this shared bit, but now we want to have this uh, actual implementation of the map source or the map speed. We want to have that inside of our um, platform specific stuff, right? So what we have for, let's look at the Android one. Um, we have this partial class again, which is together a full class with, with the shared one that we just saw, right? Uh, but now together with our Android bits. And you can see that, you know, we have this map is looping and map position. So we have all this stuff and typically they're very boring. Like there are these one-liners that you have to do, but sometimes, you know, we have, we have a little bit of more code that we want to do here. Um, and kind of like the most important thing that we want to do here, the handler is also uh, responsible for creating the actual platform view, right? So that's the actual platform specific implementation. Um, so you need to override that with whatever you want to come up with, however this control is going to be implemented on the platform. Um, and in this case, you know, we're gonna use uh, Android specific stuff. So we're gonna have that media manager, well, we, we just rewrote it a little bit to have a media manager in here. Um, and we're going to create this iExo player, right? So we have this Exo player, which is a thing of Android. And if I would look in the iOS one, again, we would have a partial class, but now, you know, together with this shared one, again, we have this macOS code that completes this, this handler. And you can see that we have this um, create platform view, and it's just going to create a new Maui media element. Um, and if we drill down into that one, I might go a little bit fast here, but we only have limited time. Um, but the way we implemented this is that we have this Maui media element, which is simply because, you know, it will have some consistent naming. Um, but again, we follow the same pattern here, right? Although it's not partial classes, but this class will only be compiled for iOS because we yes. see this naming convention again, right? So we have Mac iOS, we have Android, we have Windows. And this makes it kind of easy because now for Windows, we can just say create a platform view and we can still say um, here again, media manager. So this, this complicates things a little bit, but before it would just say like, hey, um, I, could, I could remove this and I can just say, hey, this is a new, uh, this will return a new Maui media element, right? So I can just have that same type um, but the implementation each time will be different because for Windows, if we go to the Maui media element here, now it suddenly implements a grid, right? Which kind of seems crazy here, but it has to do with like the layout and the wrapping and stuff. Um, but we are implementing this as a, a grid here. And for Mac iOS, it's just a UI view. And for Android, it's going to be a coordinated layout. Again, seems a bit crazy, but has to do with the layouting of stuff. Um, 
So we're implementing this as these controls, but we keep naming it Maui Media Element. So that's kind of like a little trick that we apply here to um, make it a little bit easier and, and more sane, I guess. Um, but yeah, so that's that's kind of like how that works. Let's undo this. Um, and then you kind of like your original question was like, hey, what was something that wasn't really straightforward? Well, a fun example, I think, is the is looping one, maybe. Um, so here in our handler, we have like in the shared one, we have easy enough. Uh, well, the is looping, we, we only do something for Android. Again, I, I kind of like don't know why that was uh, the exception for Android, but we also have properties which you can just set on like the um, abstract control, right? So on media element, you just say is looping and um, there's that. Um, and we can catch that in our Maui media element, in this case for Mac iOS. Um, and you would kind of like expect that there is a property for this, right? If this is implemented on the platform, you would have this is looping thing and boom, you would have it, but not for iOS. Um, so for iOS, what we needed to do, um, iOS has this pattern of adding observers to all kinds of things. Um, so here, whenever we initiate this control, uh, we have the constructor here and we create the AV player view controller with an AV player, all kind of platform specific stuff. Don't worry about it. Um, and here at the end, we do this add played to end observer. So we have an observer in iOS um, that can notify us whenever the video played to the end, right? So what are we going to do? Destroy any other observer that might be here. Um, then we are going to set the played to end observer, which is a field in our thing right here. Um, and we're going to set that to the NS notification center, default center, add observer. And we're going to um, add an observer for the did play to end time notification. So we're going to get a notification. Um, and the way that's implemented, it's going to trigger this method played to end. Um, and then we're going to check, like, is our media element not null? Um, is it actually is looping? So this is probably the reason why we don't need to have that map thing. We just check this from, like, the, the, the abstract um, control, right, at that time. So whenever it's set, we're going to check it at the abstract um, control anyway. We don't really need to be updated about the, the, the changes in the value here. Um, then we're just going to seek to like the beginning of the video and we're going to call play again, right? So this is kind of like one of those crazy things that seems really easy. Like it should be one property, but yeah, mm -hmm. we have to implement it ourselves basically. Um, and that's something that you will kind of like always hit at least on mm -hmm. one platform. Yeah. So I mean, iOS has, you know, looping. Maybe they're just not exposing it on the media player or... Maybe I don't know. No. Maybe maybe we're overlooking. Th maybe I'm overlooking things. Definitely possible. Yeah. But um, no, yeah, no, you're doing it right. I, I like the naming convention. I, I like how the shared things are named consistently, so you know what you're doing. Um, I did want to ask you one quick question. Back on the you know platform views, you have a shared and you have a dot net. Could you tell us exactly when that's being read? Um, yes, yeah, so that's that's this thing, right? On on the uh, handles. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, and you will see that the .NET one, um, like I said, this is typically for specific cases and, and most of the time whenever you want to use unit tests. So you will also see that this, you know, this is um, whenever you're not targeting a specific platform, which is kind of crazy because that would typically happen if you're creating a class library or maybe a console application. And um, in this specific example, um, you're not going to have a video player on the console, right? So that's mm. that's not going to happen. Or inside. Oh, of the so the, this is if I said just .NET six or just .NET seven. Yeah. Then yeah. that's what yeah. it comes down to. Exactly. Okay. So okay. this is whenever we would do like in our sample. If I would go to the project file, and you would have all the target framework. So .NET six iOS, .NET six Android, .NET six Max Catalyst, and if you would add the .NET six without any you know platform in here, yeah. then this .NET one is the code that's going to be compiled for you if you target this one. And the shared one is going to be always like, you know, yeah. it doesn't matter which one you compile, the shared one always gets compiled. Hmm. So right. that's how that works. And you will see, yeah. like, you know, if you go dig into plugins for um, .NET MAUI, you will see that this .NET one is going to be in here, but you will also see that, you know, you can see that the create platform view is just going to throw a not implemented exception and all the methods are going to be empty, right? We need to have them here because, you know, we're, we're pointing to it. Um, from like our shared thing right here. So basically it's just another platform, um, but this platform is not implemented, right? So 
Um, that's kind of like a little trick that we that we need to do um, to actually support that as well. Yeah, nice. Okay, so for developers just consuming this, right? Um, I can you yeah. know new up a media element. I can point it to a URL, and I will have all of the things ready for it to play, right? Ideally, yes. So if you look at the sample, uh, so you, 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 this is a bit special, of course, because it's linking the source directly. Um, but still, you would. Besides that, it, that would be like swapped out with installing the NuGet package. But all the rest should be exactly the same. Um, so what you need to do is get in here and to your Maui program. Whenever you, imagine that this sample is is your own app, right? So yeah. you need to go to your Maui program, um, and you would you add this. Yes. You Use Maui element. community, yeah, media element. Mm -hmm. um, why this is again something that you will see for a lot of the .NET Maui apps that are coming out and the libraries, um, especially if they have visual elements. Because what this will do, we can actually now go to the source. Doo -doo -doo. Um, you can see that this adds all the handlers that we've just seen, right? So this adds the handlers that you know that needs to be connected to make the translation between the abstract media element to the platform specific one. So you have to have this in here or some other initialization that the library maintainer um, needs in there, maybe yep. setting an API key or whatnot. Yep. This is a it's, nice way to do that. It's just easy because like then developers can just like add like one line. It's like an extension method that does a bunch yep. of things. Uh, yep. Like I mean, uh, if if you're using uh, uh, the Telerik UI for Dr. Maui, we right. use, use Telerik because like we uh, bundle up all of our you know, skia dependencies and of all of our handlers, they're all uh, kind of um, uh, kind of uh, wrapped up and strung together in that one method. So it's easy. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then, you know, uh, I have this sample media element page here. So uh, because it lives in a separate namespace, you're going to have to add this, uh, probably this one, namespace declaration here, right? So that you can use the media element. I named it media, you can name it whatever you want. And then you can just say, hey, media, media element, and you can start using all the properties, right? And all the events mm -hmm. and all the things. Um, so at the very core, you just pop in the source and uh, maybe autoplay, yes or no. And then it starts playing as we've seen. I've shown it on mm -hmm. iOS. Let me show it on, on Android as well. If I go to, this is our sample app that, that I just you know pointed out here. Um, we have like for all the uh, features in here. So if you go to the menu, we have like alerts, behaviors, we have all kinds of things. So maybe Sam can have me back every week uh, to go over <laughs> all of them. Um, but here we also have one for the media element. And whenever you go there, you basically see this whole thing um, that I have here in XAML, but now in the UI, right? So um, yeah, the, the top black box here that's now starting to play this video is basically this this media thing that you see here with this. I don't even know, maybe Sam, maybe you have an idea. I, I just copied this from some other stuff. Everywhere where I see like kind of like a demo for video players, it's this big buck bunny. Um, so I just, I don't know, I just followed along with the running gag here and I implemented this with this as well. Why not? Why not? Okay, so um, this is, you're, you're pointing to a video file. Uh, but uh, can I point to uh, a, a YouTube or a Twitch URL? Um, so no, that that is another question that is asked a lot, a lot. Um, so th yes, this is a URL, but it is indeed pointing to you know a, a actual file. Um, and I have a couple of buttons. So if I go to the code behind here, wired up, right? So this is technically. Let me see um mp4 online so this is the one that we're looking at and this is then like you know i found a site that could do test streams so this is supposed to be a live stream right so if i click on this load http live stream thing then it's going to load another video uh which i think is again big bug bunny but now live streamed right so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just uses another transport method but just to show sure. you that that the live streaming works um can you point it to a youtube video so that's a question that has been asked a lot but um it's it's also an interesting question right because um what i think people are meaning with that is can i just take a url yeah. from youtube and throw it in there no because that url yeah. actually points it's, to a page right yeah the url um, is it doesn't the point video, to a video player yeah. yeah um so can it play videos from youtube Absolutely, but you have to figure out what the actual URL for the video is that you see on that page, right? And then you probably need the YouTube APIs, uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, some other person pointed me to a library. Actually, it was on a blog post, which which was, uh, which was I wrote about this as well. Um, let me see if I can quickly pull it up. Um, 
not to plug my blog here, but it's at blog. Oh, why not? For student. Why not? I ask. Uh, <laughs> um, but and this person, I need to change it because it's WordPress and it's really really slow. Um, but this person said like, hey, I have this library that allows you to play videos from YouTube, right? So um, I then went to. I, I, great. If that's something that we can do, then that's cool. That's amazing. Um, I would love to have that. But then I opened that link. Oh, here we go. So, Gerald, you asked in this video for a way to extract a playable stream from a YouTube link. I've been happy with blah, blah, blah. Okay, great. So I opened it. And the first thing I noticed was the description on this thing. The ultimate dirty YouTube library. Yes. I don't know if that's something <laughs> that we want to maintain. <laughs> um, right, so this can totally do it. Probably it will extract like the, the URL. So you can actually see like, hey, I put in this URL, the watch URL, um, mm -hmm. and you will probably get back like the actual link that it's you should use as, as the video player, which is great. Right. Um, but I don't think this is something that will be great. We A, need to get this extra dependency in here on this. Uh, and B, like, you know, this feels like it's kind of hacked. Maybe it even goes against like the YouTube uh, mm -hmm. user agreement, right? So yeah. I don't think this is something that we want to do. Um, yeah. So yeah. No, I mean, you, you have the basics in place. Now it's up to, you know, figuring out YouTube APIs or Twitch APIs to get to a uh, point to the right place that can play the video. I'd love to get something in there. So if you're watching this and if you have any idea on how to do it a clean way, not the dirtiest way, then I'm happy to talk. Uh, but again, also, like, you know, we're focusing on the basics right now. I want to have this out as soon as possible with, like, you know, the the, the very core functionality in here. So that's my first priority. Um, and then, you know, uh, looking at the YouTube stuff is, is totally something that I want to look into. Um, other things, uh, I think you can also do cool things with, like, showing a thumbnail whenever something is not showing, right? So that's stuff that's nice to have. Um, there's all kinds of things that you can you can think uh with our, this but um, yeah our, our chat room is you know poking fun because like uh they, they don't want you off youtube <laughs> that's their whole you know probably business. yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely uh, uh yeah i'm not doing snarky yes you are Fulch and we love you uh but yeah you know everyone has their vested interests but let, let me ask you this question okay so uh these are all you know hosted uh bigger videos but let's just say i am making a game and I have, you know, pew pew or whatever uh, explosion sounds and I want to play that. And these are like tiny little uh, snippets of media. Uh, so is this heavy handed or is there something else you would recommend? I would say this is a bit uh, too much for that. But luckily, I don't know if you're setting me up here, Sam, but I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> I also have a plugin dot Maui dot media audio yeah. audio that's it um which you know it's it's like an interesting time for dotnet maui right we have mm -hmm. a ton of stuff that's coming from xamarin forms which might not be maintained anymore some stuff has actually moved into dotnet maui as core functionality which is great um but you know there's also a lot of people who are now finding out like ooh, i've been using this plugin or i want to use i want to play my pew pew sound in my game and suddenly there isn't a plugin to do it in in maui right uh, and for Xamarin, there was the simple audio player. I think we link back to it. Uh, to, 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 yeah, so this was this was created, which was great. I actually used it in my project, um, and it was updated fairly recently for you know a small thing. Uh, but you can see that you know there's it's it's still yeah, seven months cool. and and mm -hmm. years even for for some other stuff, right? So. Um, I tried to contact them. They didn't really respond, um, unfortunately. And then I looked at the license and I looked like I was free to do whatever I want. So, um, you know, also we tried to apply all the new concepts of that and Maui to this with like the host builder and, and well, it doesn't really have handlers and that kind of stuff, but um, change the API a little bit so that it's much easier to use. Um, so if you just want to play a simple sound, um, then then I think this would be the better option, um, which has like, you know, you have your audio manager at the very core. You can just say, hey, audio manager, create a little player um, with like your, your um, MP3 sound and you can just say play. Um, you can inject this, you can see it here. You can inject this with like dependency injection. Um, you can just have this this single thing uh, that you actually do here. You can use it with like your audio manager current. So you don't want to use dependency injection. You just want to play that 
want to sound with this thing, you can totally do that. And I think we actually have a PR open that we want to um, make happen is like, you know, make it even more easy inside of your XAML to make maybe um, play it. So that we have that like this this audio behavior, right? So I could totally imagine if you're using this library and you want to have like some feedback on a button or something that you want to have this little sound whenever you tap it. Um, I wanted to make that easier instead of like you know having to have like instantiate the whole manager and thing and go over and over of things again. Um, so we have this little behavior. We still need to merge it. Um, but now you can suddenly say, hey, I have this behavior. You ideally, in my vision, you would just say like, hey, this is the file name that I want to play. Uh, you declare that in XAML and boom, um, it plays whenever you do the action, right? So um, that's that's something that we want to add here as well. So this is, this is being developed. And if you just want to play simple sounds, you can definitely play songs with this as well. Uh, but if you want to go like full media player with video, audio, um, Media element, another thing that's requested a lot is like integration with like the OS kind of like background playing controls. So whenever you go in iOS, you have on your lock screen like the play sure. back controls, right? Yeah. Um, if you want to go that route, go with media element. If you want to play simple sounds inside of your game or some button feedback sounds or whatever, go with this plugin mod uh, Maui audio thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, you have it both ways. So if you don't need the deep integrations and simple audio, this this will work. Um, yep. Okay, and um, I don't want to keep you for you know very long. Um, <laughs> no uh, worries. But, okay, one one last maybe question here. So um, as a developer, I am using let's say the plugin, or I'm using the media element on a certain page, um, and then I leave. Like, is there any like memory leakage? thing or disposable things that I need to care about or is it gone when I when I leave the page or if I kill the app hopefully not uh we we, we we're humans we make mistakes now uh, that's of course especially um very important with this stuff right because maybe even more with like the media element because you know if you're mm -hmm. loading big chunks of video in right. memory that's not great um, I think for this we have a it's I don't see it right here but we have a, also here a sample app um, and I think there is something here in um, in the sample that will show you how to do that. Um, so you can see here, oh, see, we have an actual method, tidy up, that will mm -hmm. help you with that. So um, okay. that, that will help you uh, tidy up all the resources that might have uh, be stuck with this. Um, I see we might do a better better job at documenting this, but um, yeah, this this will help you with doing that. So that will tidy up like the audio player, oh, set it to null and dispose right all the yeah. things. We yeah. have a destructure here. Um, and I think the same is for like the media element. We we try to, you know, uh, best we can uh, clean up all the things and uh, whatever you leave the page and whatnot. Uh, but also there, I think we still need to do some testing if that actually like yeah, expect, that gets, it works. That gets tricky. That gets tricky yeah. quickly. Because yeah. uh, like oh, developers, like we, we are we love shooting ourselves in the foot right i mean yeah there's nothing <laughs> stop there's nothing stopping you from on a page naming up you know five instances of the media player and you know loading up five big video elements and then when you leave the page what happens yeah uh, so yeah yeah Oh, one thing, it's totally, totally random, but one thing now I see Android again and thinking about things that is much requested and hard on a platform, playing a video in full screen on Android, it seems impossible. Um, so that's something that has been really? much requested. We're going to have to look into it. Uh, we're probably going to fix it somehow, but it's crazy, crazy hard. So, yeah. Interesting. Probably because of how Android goes about activities and that kind of stuff. That's probably why that is, but um, uh, that's going to be an interesting one. Yeah, I don't do Android at all. It's just, like you said, like too many differences. Like, I mean, personally, is your phone Android or iOS? Yeah. Yeah, I, iOS all the way. All iOS, way. Yeah, 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 me too. I mean, I, I have supported Android, but it, it, I mean, just way too many differences, a lot of different things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the other thing, probably, with all the different, like, vendors and versions and whatnot, so... Uh, Oh well. <laughs> full Sham is saying only Google, only YouTube is allowed to play you full screen. Yes, so they want to have you on YouTube and then <laughs> only those will be allowed full screen. That's that's their strategy. Yeah. And you know, when uh when everything uh stops working, just reboot your phone. How 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 difficult yeah. <laughs> can it be? Exactly. <laughs> Oh, and full schnabel, don't go there. Okay, you're going to hurt uh, both Daryl and me here, maybe. I spent <laughs> three, four years of my life on Windows Phone. It was beautiful. It's, yeah, sad. 
Um, but, you know, we had a beautiful OS and user experience, but, you know, it's unless everybody comes along for the Calm. ride, it's, it's hard. It's hard. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, Gerald, you're a busy man doing all the things uh, for oh, Microsoft nice. and also uh, open source and all of your com community contributions and your videos. So uh, thank you for all that you do. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, and then the world doesn't deserve one. <laughs> so far. Uh, that's true. That's true, foolish devil. All right. Uh, well, um, if nothing else, uh, Gerald, I'm going to bring your desktop down. Um, but, uh, you know, Full Schnabel and uh, Alan and everybody else, thanks for tuning in. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, you know, I think this is exciting. I, I mean, to your point, Al, uh, Gerald, uh, I think uh, something like Gartner Mavi needs to have a way, an easy way for developers to play audio and video. So thanks for taking this up and maybe eventually we'll see this form up enough in community toolkit and then you know eventually moved into uh maui um, hopefully we, yeah uh, we've got ways to go so um oh no full schnabel is you know bringing out all the all, all the trolling guns here don't talk about <laughs> silver light here <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, uh, Silverlight and, and plugins, like and, and even like Flash for that matter, they, they did some things right with, with videos and stuff like that. But it's, if we uh, didn't have that, we weren't where we are today, right? So, in, in fact, this might be you know a little known fact like .NET Core, like when it uh, like the first time .NET stepped outside of Windows, it was actually Silverlight. I mean, there, there are parts of .NET Core that started off with some Silverlight code base. Uh, so there were some good things uh, we did, and the dev experience was great. Uh, but you know, plugins were not meant to scale um, in the browser. So here we are. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, so Gerald, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, the, the little tears <laughs> of sadness that keeps us going. Uh, but uh, thanks so much for spending an hour with me and showing off. I Absolutely think it's exciting. So you know, uh, kudos to you and the team for keeping on working on this. Uh, you're making thanks lives so easier for developers. So. Thank you for that. And uh, thank you, Chatroom. Um, uh, this has been a good solid hour, and uh, we'll see you around on the next stream. Until then, stay healthy, stay productive, and uh, yeah, adios for now. Thank you so much. <laughs>